Hello everybody, I'm back again. This is my second attempt to make this video. The first time I made it, I was probably about 17, in it, uh, 17 minutes in it and it just cut off for me. So hopefully this time I'll be able to go straight through without any problems or difficulties. I'm gonna say a little quick prayer real quick and I'm gonna get into this word. Um, Father God, I just want to thank you right now, Lord God, for your word, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is true, that your word is life, Lord God, for all those that find it, Lord God. It's nourishment for us, Lord God, for our spiritual bodies, Father God, to grow, Father God, that we may learn of you and know of you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So, Lord God, I just give you all honor and all glory. Lord God, I pray, Father God, that I decrease and that you increase, Father God, in Jesus' name. And, Lord God, that your word will be rich. I pray that your word will be sealed in the hearts of all of those that hear it father god in jesus name lord god so i just give you all honor all praise and all glory in the name of your son jesus christ i pray and thank you lord god amen thank you lord thank you lord okay um i'm coming out of psalms 137 and i'm uh, um it's i'm done with the first four verses of psalm 137 verse one by the rivers of babylon there we sat down, yea, we wept, when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing unto us one of the songs of Zion. Verse 4, How shall we sing the Lord's song? In a strange land. Love these verses right here. Interesting verses. Um, what I love about these verses that honestly it actually deals with a lot of what's going on um, in the world today with people just feeling hopelessness and wanting to give up and the methods that they used to uh, live by and work by they 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 have seen that it's uh, a lot of for a lot of them that it hasn't been working. So I want to um, shed a little light on this right here. Uh, these verses first it, it, it covers the Jews in exile. Um, the Jew the Jewish people have always had God defending them, and and God will go out and fight their battles for them. So they had a reputation of being a strange group of people with a powerful God that constantly fight their battles for them and win battles that they should have lost. So too many times they've been outnumbered, outgunned, and yet they still get the victory. And a lot of their fights, their battles, wasn't traditional wars. Like the people will come at them with, with swords and shell, but the Jews will go out to fight them with musical instruments, singing, worshiping God. And in the midst of that, God will show up. He, he would turn the enemy upon each other. He would turn and make them fight each other. They would chase each other and kill each other. And they always end up getting vic the victory. They'll get the spoils of war and their reputation will go around that these pretty much are, are not the group of people to mess with. The Jews were feared at that time because... Um, no one was actually able to beat them. They were always victorious in their battles. So they had a reputation of having a powerful God. Um, in a lot of their fights, they used to take the Ark of the Covenant. And in this Ark of the Covenant, they, the word was going around that every time they have the Ark with them, these people are going to win this fight. So here it is. Um, the Babylonians have attacked them a few times. And on this specific time, King, Nebuchad uh, King Nebuchadnezzar II came and they, his army, they raided uh, Judah and they pretty much crushed them. They suffered a horrible defeat. They set the land on fire. They uh, brought like thousands of people in the land back to their land, to the Babylonian land. So this is the cry of the Jews recorded right here in the first four verses of Psalm 137. And the psalm is penned by the rivers of Babylon. They're no longer in Israel. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. So they thought back 
They were thinking back to when times were good. They were thinking back to when everything was right. They were thinking back to when they had it going on. They were thinking back to when things were going better for them. They were thinking back to all the times that God was on their side. They were thinking back to the times they always got the victory. But there was a covenant. There was a covenant between God and the Jewish people. And the Jews had a part to uphold in the covenant. They had to be holy. They had to be righteous. They had to abstain from all these um, things that a lot of other cultures of people were um, involving themselves in. But they wasn't. They, they went out. They were doing everything evil under the sun. God was merciful. He was merciful. He was merciful until his mercy ran out. And he used the Babylonians to actually punish them by beating them and taking them into slavery, taking them and out of uprooting them out of their own land and bringing them into the land of Babylon. So verse two say we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Their harps, again, were, the, were their mis musical instruments. These harps was what they would take to the battle. These harps always worked for them. Their instruments always worked. Their worship always worked. God always fought their battles for them. But this time it didn't work. They brought their traditional weapons, the thing that usually get them the victory, and this time it didn't get them the victory. It didn't get them the victory. So now they're in Babylon. They still have these harps, but now it doesn't mean anything to them because it didn't work. It failed them. So they take their harps and they hang it on the willow trees. And they say they, they sat by the river and just cried. They accepted defeat. They realized that, that they missed it somehow. They realized that God had turned their back on them. They realized that they wasn't in good standing with the God that they served anymore. And it was too late for them. So verse 3 say, For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. So basically right here, the same ones that just whooped them is now telling them to be happy about it. And at the same time, they're telling them, listen, we want y'all to sing one of them songs that y'all are accustomed to singing. Sing one of them songs that you sing back there in Zion. Sing those war songs that you normally sing when your God gives you the victory even though you don't got the victory now. Now let me hear you sing about how good God is now that you don't have the victory. Now let me hear you sing about how great God is now that you have been brought low. Now let me hear you sing about how God is a healer. Let me hear you sing about how God is a provider. Let me hear you sing the, uh, the songs that you used to sing. And here it is. They are taunting them right now. So in verse 3, I'll read it again and say, For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. So they're taunting them. Listen, go ahead. I know you got it in you. Yeah, every time you're at war, you're singing them war songs, and God is always showing up, but he didn't show up this time. Your war song didn't work this time, but now we still want you to sing it. Now we still want you to sing how good God is. And this is the cry of the people. This is what the devil is doing right now to the people of God. All this time you've been serving God in the church. Now let me hear you sing about how good God is. Yeah, after the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah, all throughout the pandemic. Now let me hear you sing. Now that... Your mother has been stricken with COVID and sickness and you prayed and prayed and prayed and she didn't get healed. Now let me hear you sing about how God is a healer. Now that, that you've been praying and praying and praying for promotion at your work, but instead you lose your job and instead you get demoted or instead you get furloughed or fired. Now... Let me hear you sing about how your God 
is a provider. Now let me hear you sing it. Now that, 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 that you've been praying and praying for a covering over your family, but now you're losing family to prisons and to murder. Now let me hear you sing about how God is a protector, how he protects his people. So the devil is now taunting the people of God because they fell through their own sin, their own sinful lifestyle. So God used the Babylonian to attack them. He used the Babylonians to conquer them. He used the Babylonians to bring the Babylonians to bring them down and, 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 and uh, punish them. So he used them as the whip. And verse four says this, it's the response of the Jewish people is how Shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How? How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you sing the Lord's song when you're on a strange land, when you're on strange territory, territory, when you're on unfamiliar ground? How do you sing the Lord's song? How do you continue to sing praises to the God that you've been believing in all your life for a certain thing that didn't happen and now you're still expected to praise him about it? How do you do it? How do you sing about how God is a healer when God didn't heal you? How do you sing about how God is a provider but he didn't provide for you? How do you sing about how God is, is awesome but he's not showing up when you want him to show up? How do you sing his praises on strange ground? This is nothing new. This is something that a lot of people inside the Bible encountered. Excuse me. Circumstances that didn't look good. Circumstances that seemed like uh, there was no way around it. With death seemed like it was certain. Where it seemed like God wasn't showing up. But how, how did they get the victory? It's all throughout the Bible, but God being all wise and all knowing said, just in case, just in case they missed it, just in case they missed it and all the other stories in the Bible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all these characters into one book and I'm going to bring their stories into one chapter and maybe they'll catch it then. And this is what it says. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not as yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark of the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned into a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. By faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that an Isaac shall thy seed be called. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, 
when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. So many stories. So many stories, so many characters, and God is telling you that all of them got the victory the same exact way. It was by faith. It says that by faith, they subdued kingdoms. They brought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. By faith, they quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant and fight, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. By faith, women received their dead, raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better res resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, faith, it was by faith they attained all the promises of God. Faith is what, what is needed to get a, a, a response from God. It's only by faith you're going to please God. Without faith, you can't please him. Without faith, you can't access anything that he has for you. This book right here is filled with promises. It's filled with promises for everyone. But guess what? Everyone don't receive them. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the entire world. But guess what? The world is not dying saved. Plenty of people are going to the grave without Christ. Why? Because they did not have faith to receive Christ. Why? Because they never heard. Many of them never heard the good news of Christ. So they go to the grave. Anything that you want to receive from this book. It takes faith to receive it. It takes faith to receive it. There is no other way to receive any of the promises. They're for you. But you can only receive it by faith. Not head faith, but heart faith. The God kind of faith. And a lot of people got the wrong kind of faith. I, I, I be thinking about a lot of times we come together in prayer. And it's, it's tradition for everyone just to get together and pray when you don't even know where everyone's faith is at. Do you realize when you come together in group prayer, you're only as strong as your weakest link? If only one person there that does not believe, if it's only one person that do not have the faith that you have, that God can change the situation around, it will completely uh, 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 alleviate the whole prayer. It will completely do away with everything you're asking for. Because faith achieves what God is, 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 is which, what you're looking for. It's faith by faith that you receive the promises. So if one person doubts, if one person doubts that, 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 that agreement, that prayer of agreement is broken, only one person is needed to doubt. So if you got 10 people coming together in a group prayer, they're doing a prayer of agreement. That means that they're all linked together so you are only as strong as your weakest link if one person doubts the whole prayer is void it doesn't do anything why because God can't honor doubt he honors true faith so you come off better praying by yourself or praying with one person that's why Jesus when he sent them out the, 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 the go to the, uh, the lands before him to, to heal the sick and raise the dead and preach the gospel guess how he sent them he sent them out by twos he didn't send them out 10 at a time and 20 at a time he sent them out by twos because he know you're only as strong as your weakest link <clears throat> it's faith that's why the words say that without faith, it's impossible to please him. 
without faith, it's impossible to please him. So you got to have faith to achieve the promises of God. Excuse me. I want to go back to Psalms real quick because I want to point something out what people have a habit of doing. And it's the same thing that the, Jew, that the Jews did here. It said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. You want to get the victory. The first thing you got to do, you got to look at this right here. And you got to not do what they did. The very first thing they did when they got an enemy territory is they sat down. Don't sit down on the job. If you believe in God for something, the first thing you got to do is stand. You got to make a stand for what you believe. You got to stand and when all else is done, still be standing when it's all over with. Because the storm is going to come. But you got to remain standing. Don't sit down. Because it's a sign of giving up. You don't want to give up. The second thing you don't do. It say, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, they wept. They cried. They didn't cry out. They cried. Don't cry, but cry out to the God that's able to save you. Understand God can change things around, but you have to cry out, not cry. Crying is not going to do anything. Crying is just some emotional outburst. Crying does not change anything. Crying is not going to get God's attention. It's when you're crying out to him and faith, it changes things. And it say when we remember Zion. If you're looking for the promises of God, you got to stop looking back at the past. Stop looking back at the past. Look forward to what you're trying to get, what you're trying to attain. All the promises are before you. What you're looking for, you're looking forward to it. That's what you're looking at. You're looking forward. Don't look back. And what things used to be. Why? Because the Jews here are looking back to Zion. Back to when times were good. Back to when times were great. Back to when times when they didn't have to struggle. Back at times where everybody was happy. Back at times where everybody was family. Back at every time where everybody was like on one accord. But listen, you can't look back. You got to continue to look forward if you're believing for something. Because when tragedy do strike, you got to be able to pick yourself back up. When tragedy do strike, you got to still be able to stand. Why? Because you still got people that's dependent on you. Glory, Lord God. Then it say, in verse 2, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Like I say, their harps were their instruments of praise. When they found out they got defeated, the first thing they do is stop praising. They stop their worship. You cannot stop praising. Their praise was how they got the victory every other time. The praise is how you continue to get the victory now. Why? Because God inhabits the praise of his people. God dwells in his praise. Once you start praising, you get his attention. Once you start praising him in the midst of the storm, praising him in the midst of the valley, praising him in the midst of the darkness, he shows up. Just like the three Hebrew boys. He showed up in the midst of the fire because they was praising him. Oh, listen. Oh, I don't care about getting thrown in this fire. I'm not going to acknowledge you. I'm not going to bow down to you. God and only God do we serve. That's how you praise him. That's how you worship him. You got to praise him. You got to worship him. You got to continue to move forward in Jesus' name. And then it's saying, How, they, how the enemy taunts you. For there, they that carry this way captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. Saying, sing is one of the songs of Zion. And they say, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You do it by faith. You do it by faith. In spite of how things look. In spite of how things look. Why? Because we are called to walk by faith and not by how things look. We are called to walk by faith and not by how things look. It's not by sight. It's not by hearing. 
right? Because your sight and your hands can, can only give you the facts. It does not give you the truth. So because the, it's the, a fact, it's just a fact. It's not the truth. The facts have to bear witness to the truth, but the truth don't ever have to bear witness to the facts. And that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth of the matter. So I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to first, when things don't look good, don't give up on God. When, when things didn't go your way, when your prayer didn't get answered, don't give up on God. Continue to make your stand. You want to cry, don't just cry, but cry out to the God that saves you. And never give up on your worship. Never give up on your worship. And don't look back. And you will have all that God has promised you. I promise you, you will. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen.